is well, it is well with my soul. See the last sign. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. As long as you're there, oh Father, Lord, it is well. As long as your promises are there, oh Lord, it is well. Whatever the situation we are in today, remember that God is with us, the God who promised us, He is with us in every step of our lives. No matter what our situations are, God is with us. As long as you're near to us, oh Father, Lord, we get a strength, oh Lord, that the world cannot give us, Lord Jesus. Be strong even in the midst of the storm, oh Lord. That's only, oh Lord, by your power, by your grace, oh Father.
across the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with Thee. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast Your embrace, yes, Lord. 
Help me find the way Bring me back to you Sometimes we might not feel that God is doing something or sometimes we feel that is even God looking at us or even even caring about us. But to be honest, God is always near us. He's always near us. He just wants us also to work out some things. He just gives us a strength. He just gives a push. And He tells us to do it. Because He knows, God knows that you and I are capable of doing. Yes, He's near to us. Let's pray this prayer, Lord. Help us to know that you're near us. Lord, draw me close to you, Father. Draw me close to you, Father, so that nothing, nothing, nothing can come against us. Let this be our prayer to die. Thank you, Lord. Our most gracious Heavenly Father in heaven, thank you so much, O Lord, for this wonderful time which you've given us to worship your name and praise your name and glorify your name, O Lord. All the glory and honor belongs to you and you alone, O oh Father. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be worshipped, O oh Father. The whole heaven is worshipping you. At the same time, here we are, O oh Lord. We are human beings, O oh Father, worshipping your name. Accept our worship. Accept our offering. Thank you for your presence, Lord, in the midst of us, O oh Father. It's all because of your grace and mercy. As we are going, O oh Father, Lord, forward to listen to your word, oh Lord Jesus. You speak through your servant. You give the words, oh Lord Jesus, which is necessary, which is needed for all of us. We need your word, O oh Lord. We need your words. We need to hear your voice, O oh Lord. We want to hear your voice so that we can go forward, Father, in our life, Lord Jesus, so that we learn how to live according to your purpose, O Father Jesus, according to your word. Speak through your servant, Lord. Use him, O Lord. Anoint him, a special anointing on him, O Lord. We pray that, O Lord Jesus, every word that comes from his mouth, O Lord, anoint us and bless us and heal us. Sanctify us. Help us to correct ourselves wherever we have been wrong. 
Mend our souls, O Lord. Mend our souls, O Father. Once again, I want to thank you all. Thank you for all of them who are watching the service. I pray for each and every one of them. Let your special anointing be upon them. Let their lives, O Father, be built, O Lord, for the extension of your kingdom, O Lord Jesus. Let them be useful. Use all of them, O Father. You know what's going on in the lives of Father, Lord. You be their comfort. You be their strength, O Lord. I pray name by name that you bless them abundantly. Thank you so much, Lord, that you are a Savior, that you are Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross of Calvary, O Father. Yes, O Father, as we sang today, O Father, draw us nearer, O Lord. Nearer, O Father, Jesus, O God. Never let us go away. There's always been near to you, O Father, so that we never, never, ever displease, O Father, Lord Jesus. Thank you once again for listening and answering our prayer. We believe, and I believe that you have answered all our prayers. I submit this prayer in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings in the almighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining this uh, worship service. And I, I hope you've been really blessed with the worship. So over the past few weeks, we have started a series on the Ten Commandments. We have done three sermons on it and we're going to enter the fourth sermon today. Uh, if you can read Exodus chapter 20 verse 7, it says, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. So from the beginning of this series, we've been, um, I've been telling you the same thing that these Ten Commandments are something that we have read hundreds of times. We have, we have heard many, many sermons on this, but we are reading the living word of God and God can talk to us in a very special way through these Ten Commandments. And I, I, and I pray and I, and I believe that God has been speaking to you through these Ten Commandments. And please, uh, be, uh, please listen to this sermon with a, uh, uh, with, a prayer, with a prayerful heart that God would speak to us in a very special way through this third commandment. So this third commandment deals with the name of the Lord. We have three points in this sermon. The first point is there is power in his name. There is power in his name. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to 11 says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is about every name and at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. It talks about the name of God, the name of Jesus is about every other name in this world. The other names include the names of people, the names of, uh, the names of authority, name of names of people in authority or names of diseases, names of disasters in this world. Sometimes some few names have some weight with that, right? It's few names, when those names, when we hear that name, there is some respect to that. There is some power associated with that. Then there is fear associated few, with few names. When we speak about some uh, diseases or some sickness, people don't like to spell out those names because, because there is fear associated with those names. So whatever name is there in this world, the word of God says his name, the name of Jesus, the name of God is about every other name in this world. So whatever name is trying to rule your life today, maybe there is fear in your life because of the name that, uh, because of the name of a disease, because of the name of a situation, maybe you have named your situation in a, with a particular tag or you are given your family a particular tag, you're given your health a particular tag, or you're given your finances a particular tag, whatever name it is, you need to understand that the name of Jesus triumphs everything. The name of Jesus triumphs all, triumphs all. There's one more wonderful verse, uh, Proverbs 18 verse 10, it says, the name of the Lord is a fortified tower, the righteous run to it and are safe. Maybe we all know these words, but 
we we forget or we don't emphasize on the first one the name of the lord is the name of the lord is we need to understand that when we when we say the name of the lord it's not just the god the the god is different and the name of the god is different no the name of god itself has the complete essence of god when we are saying the name of god the name of god is not separate from god but it it in itself is the complete essence of god so that's why this verse in uh, proverbs 18:10 says the name of the lord is a fortified tower so as we have read through this two verses if in any way that we are facing some kind of difficulties in our life or we are undergoing some kind of difficult situations or we are we are we are being we are being um there is a particular name that is kind of bringing us down it might be the name of a person or a thing or any situation what we need to do is we need to run to god the best way to run to god is call upon the name of the lord when we call upon the name of the lord when we call upon the name of the lord what we are doing is we are calling upon the complete essence of god we are not just using the name it's, it's it's not like just a name but it is the complete essence of god that's why in romans chapter 10 verse 13 says everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved so everyone who is calling on the name of the lord will be saved because his name is a very powerful name his name has all power and authority his name you can use his name in every situation see in in this world if we know a person who is who is in authority and we try to use that person's name to get some things done but we need to understand there is there is a limitation to his name maybe that name has power and authority within your region within your state or maybe within your country but maybe outside that boundary outside that region outside that state the name might be useless that name might not have any value but when it comes to the name of god when we using the name of god it has no limitation there is no limitation to the name of god there is no lim- there is no particular situation where the name of god cannot be used it can be financial physical mental spiritual whatever it is the name of the lord is supreme so as you're listening to this sermon whatever kind of situation you are going through if you can call on the name of the lord if you can just call on the name of the lord you will be saved and you can experience the power and authority of god in your life by calling on the name of the lord because the name of the lord is not just a name but is a, it's a complete as is the essence of god himself i think the first point is very sh- uh, i want to keep the first one very short but it is w- going to be very important as we discuss the second and the third point one more verse we'll read and then we'll get in the second point john chapter 14 verse 13 says and whatever you ask in my name that i will do that the father may be glorified in the son so whatever you ask in the name of the lord in the name of jesus it will be given because the name of god has all authority because the name of the lord has all authority he can the name of the lord can be our refuge it can be a strength the name of the lord can save us the name of the lord can provide for us the name of the lord can meet our every need because his name is a powerful name there is power in his name let this point sink into our heart it's so simple it's so simple it's so uh, to listen to it it's it seems so simple it seems that we have heard this many times but we need to really understand and grasp the meaning of it that the name of the lord there is power there is ultimate power there is all authority in the name of the lord when we come to the second point who can use the name of it who can use his name the first point is there is power in his name that's good 
He understood that there is power in his name, that when we call on the name of the Lord, we will be saved, that when we need a refuge and strength, we can call on the name of the Lord. When we need healing, we can call on the name of the Lord because his name is above every other name in this world. When we, when we need something in this world, we can ask in his name and it will be given to us. That's wonderful. That's wonderful to hear that there is power in his name, that his name is greater than any other name in this world. But the second point is very important. Who can use his name? Who can use the name of the Lord? Who can, who can experience this power? Who can experience this authority in their life? The apostles were preaching in the name of the Lord. They were baptizing in the name of the Lord and they were casting out demons in the name of the Lord. And they were healing people in the name of the Lord. So when this was happening, everybody in the world, everybody around them was observing it. And then when they were in a particular region, the sons of the priests saw the apostles using the name of the Lord and they saw the miracles that were taking place and how the demons started screaming and shouting and started running away from those places when they used the name of the Lord and they thought, why don't we use the name of the Lord? We are the sons of priests. We have, we have more we have more qualification than the apostles they are uneducated people if uneducated people if simple fisherman can use the name of Jesus and do such wonderful things what about us we are educated we are we are blood is a blood of the priest we are we are people with special calling so let us use the name of the Lord so maybe they were walking about they're trying to search for a person with who is possessed with demon, with any kind of evil spirit. They got hold of a person. They were standing around him and they proclaimed the name of Jesus. So let us read what happened. Acts chapter 19, 14 to 16 onwards. One day the evil, from 15 we can read, one day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? So they, they proclaimed the name of Jesus and this is what the evil spirit says. Jesus I know. And I know Paul. But I don't know who you are. So you are proclaiming the name of Jesus. You are, you are, pro, you are speaking out in his name. But I don't see authority. I don't see any seal of authority in your life. I don't see that you are approved to use his name. And what happened? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. So when the apostles used the name of the Lord, people were healed, people were touched. The evil spirits ran away from them. But when the sons of the priest, the seven of them started using the name of the Lord, the evil spirit asked them, who are you? I know, I know that you're using the name of Jesus, but I don't see, I don't, I don't think you have the authority to do, do, do that. And he beats them up. He overpowers them. So this single verse can show us that it's not that G, the name of Jesus can be used as a magic wand that you just move it about and people can get whatever they want to get done. You can fulfill your evil desires or you can do n number of things just by using the name of Jesus. This story proves it wrong. It seems like we need to have some kind of an authority. It seems like we need to have some kind of a special qualification to use the name of the Lord. And that qualification is we need to be Blood rela related, we are blood. We need to be blood relatives of Jesus to use his name. When we are washed in the blood of Jesus, when we have accepted Jesus as a personal savior, when we have made Jesus as a Lord and savior, when he is reigning in our life, that is when we receive the authority to use the name of the Lord. It's not the worldly qualification that is required. It's not the religious qualification that's required. It's not the theological certificates that are required. 
but it is required that we have the stamp from above that we have the stamp that we belong to Jesus so today if you belong to Jesus if you are given your life to Jesus if you are washed in his blood if you are if you are if Jesus is the lord and savior of your life then you have the authority then you have the authority to use the name of Jesus so when you use the name of Jesus the evil will more, evil one will not say will not ask who are you because he knows who you are because when he sees you he doesn't see you but he sees our master when he sees us he sees our savior when he sees us he sees our loving father our savior and our lord jesus christ and there is no question but he obeys to us he obeys to that command he obeys to that proclamation he runs away because we are a people with authority then there is one more person uh Simon Acts chapter 8 verse 18 to 21 when Simon saw that the spirit was given at the laying of the apostle's hand he offered money and said give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the holy spirit Peter answered may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of god with money and the 21 verse is most important you have no part you have no part in this ministry you have no share in this ministry because your heart is not right before god so if we have to be if we need to use this wonderful awesome powerful name of jesus we learn that we need to be washed in the blood of jesus we need to be our hearts need to be right with god unless and until our hearts are right with god we don't have the authority to use the all powerful name but once our hearts are right with god when our hearts are right with god when our intentions our motives our desires are not run by our own thought that we are not the masters of our own life but jesus is in control of our lives our desires our thoughts and our dreams and our visions are all obeying or have knelt in the presence of Jesus have have obeyed to the complete uh word of the lord that is when we can use the name of Jesus when we can use the all powerful name of Jesus and no force in this world would be able to stand against us the first point that we a discussed was there is power in his name but who can use his name who are washed in his blood and whose heart is right with the lord so today we need to just check our hearts are we right in the presence of the lord is a is a life accept acceptable to the lord if a life is acceptable to the lord then we have such great authority in our life that no force of this world can act against us or against our family or finances our health or our kids or or anything that is related to us but the sad thing would be that the forces of the world would act against our family would act act against our children our business our job is under a curse our finances are under a curse our family is under a curse is under the attack of the evil one but we think that we have the authority but in truth we don't have authority we are like samson samson had to shave but he thinks he still has all the power from god so there is a call see the philistines are coming on you and he thinks he still has the power he thinks he still has of the almighty strength of the lord he gets up on his feet he goes into battle but the problem is he does not have the anointing of god on him he becomes their slave his eyes are taken out and he becomes their prisoner the reason is he thought he had that anointing on him he thought that the power of god would descend on him but the point is his heart is not right with god he's not in the covenant of god he's not 
he is not in the covenant that god has given him he disobeyed god he his heart is not right with god so he thought he had power he thought he had the almighty presence of the lord in him he thought the presence of god would descend on him but he did not how many of us are experiencing that kind of a situation in our life we thought we had we had authority we thought we were going to church i'm going to church i'm member of a church so you thought maybe you could you could withstand any kind of any kind of evil forces that come against you or against your family but once you went into battle you realize that you are all alone you have tried proclaiming the name of the lord you have tried screaming the name of the lord you have tried to use the authority of the name of the lord but you've been disappointed you've been disappointed because maybe your heart is not right with the lord but today is a wonderful opportunity to make our hearts right with the lord when we make our hearts right with the lord we get the ultimate authority to use his name and the best thing is there is no name that is above the name of jesus in this world let us get to the third point the third point is do not misuse the name of the lord i think that is what the third commandment is all about do not misuse the name of the lord that's what exodus chapter 20 verse 7 says you shall not misuse the name of the lord your god and very carefully for the lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses the name so we have already discussed this it's not just the name of the lord it's not just a name it is god himself it is the completeness and the full essence of god so when we misuse the name of the lord we are we are misusing god himself we are not recognizing his holiness we are not we are not really understanding who we are worshiping or who we are following we are not really able to grasp that our god is a holy god he is an almighty god so when we end up misusing the name of the lord it's a very it's a very sad thing because when we misuse the name of the lord it says there are some consequences he won't he will not hold anyone guiltless so he says we are guilty when we misuse the name of the lord so in in this generation that we live in we can see all around us that the name of god is misused we as christians we as christians when we say the lord or when we say jesus or when we say yahweh or when we use adonai or el shaddai or when we use when we are when we simply say god we are referring to the same single person we are we are referring to him we are not refer, when we say god itself when we use the word god itself we are referring to our lord our savior jesus yahweh our father the son of holy spirit god itself the word god itself so j- just let us let us look at the world that we live in and how much the name of the lord the name of god is misused people use the name of the lord use god use the name of god in a very inconsiderate way when we are surprised we use his name when we are angry we use his name when we want to curse someone we use his name when we are disappointed we use his name and some of us to prove a point we use his name to strengthen our statement we use his name and many of the songs in the cinemas they misuse the name of the lord they have no regard for the name of the lord the name of the name of god god is used in with such little thought with such little consideration they could sing about god with 
they could use the word god and sing about god in a most inconsiderate way maybe in a way that you would not even address a teacher a parent in this world a leader in this world you dare not address a leader in this world in such a manner but you would address god the name god in such a way that is the kind of the world that we are living in today but we need to understand we as the people of god we need to understand that we cannot misuse the name of the lord if there is we need to understand see we have for the first and the second point there is power in his name and and there is it's not like everybody can use the name of the lord it's so special it's so powerful it's the complete essence of god it ha- it is the greatest name it is the most powerful name so when there is when there is a blessing in using his name when there when the doors open when we use his name when when we know the truth that no force in this world can stand in front of his name how much more careful we should be when we use his name in this world and when we use his name in any kind of conversation private or in public we are cursing our lives we are cursing we are bringing curses on ourselves by misusing the name of the lord because the name of the lord is holy his name has his complete divinity today i plead with you those who are listening to this sermon that you would regard the name of the lord with utmost respect you will regard the name of the lord as the name is holiness deserves that any time we use god we would be more aware about why we are using it and how we are using it that we would not be careless that we would not join with the rest of the world in disregarding his name but we the people of god who have the authority who have the authority because of the grace that has been given unto us to use this all powerful name would really love his name adore his name worship his name and use his name with such great reverence let's close our eyes let us pray thank you jesus for the your word that you have set before us lord thank you for your name the precious and beautiful name the most powerful name in this world and is it's it, and it's not that just it's powerful and it's not just it's the refuse is my strength it's not just it has all authority but that you have given me the authority to use it that by your grace by washing me in your blood by cleansing me in your blood you made me yours and you have made my heart right with you so that i would have an experience of authority in my life to use your precious powerful name o oh lord o oh lord as we live in this world that misuses your name o oh lord let us be a people who o oh lord have such, such great reverence for your name and we will really understand the preciousness of your name the holiness of your name and that we would be an example in this world and how we need to how we need to how we need to use your name that we would lord jesus be a testimony to the world that through our lives and through our words and through through everything that we say and we do that we would bring glory and honor to your name Oh Lord I pray for every person who is watching this worship service oh Lord I pray that you would bless their families their education their jobs their businesses and whatever works they're doing oh Lord Lord those who are in distress difficulties who are going through financial difficulties physical difficulties emotional issues I pray that you stretch your hand and I pray that you heal them and strengthen them oh Lord use us for their kingdom and Lord give us thy wisdom and knowledge and how we need to go forward May you receive all the glory honor through our lives 
In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining this worship service. Please do share it with your friends so that they can be blessed through the English worship service. Thank you so much.